and support begins in three, two, one. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Nurture and Support. It's a recommendation podcast where we share cool things, or at least things we think are cool, with all of you in the hopes that you'll think they're cool too. I'm Mel at Karmic9 on Twitter. And hi everybody, I'm Kelly Tool at K-E-L-L-Y-T-H-U-L, also on Twitter. And More than so Mel, happy. usually. Yes. <laughs> I've been back lately. Yes, although lately, yeah, maybe a little recently. Bit. Could be yeah, closer. yeah. I'm a little more active during the day some days, but in the evenings, I've usually had too much to do lately. But I'm trying to get back into the swing of things. It would help if there was good stuff on TV. But hey, um, Dark Matter and um, oh my gosh, what's that other one? I recommended them. Whatever. Uh, um, the the. Uh, yeah. It's the one it's the show that <laughs> followed it, right? Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah, that Those one. Killjoys. Uh, Killjoys. Yeah. Okay, I can't remember I can't sit there forgetting my favorite one. Uh Killjoys and Dark Matter are back on sci fi, so that's something. I like those. Both of those shows were pretty good. So they're back. And uh so I'm gonna try to be around for those. I don't know how much live tweeting I'm gonna get done, but I'll try. So on that uplifting note, I know all of you are terribly thrilled that some of my T V shows are back and I can actually watch T V again since I don't watch some of those other shows. <laughs> My recommendation this week is not for your eyes, it's for your ears. I know I recommended a podcast last week, and I'm going to recommend another podcast this week, only this one has been going on a little bit longer. So you've got more of a backlog to keep you occupied with for a while. Uh, it is called King Falls AM, and I can't really tell you how much I love this podcast. It is so much fun. It's um, it's like the name implies. They are uh, radio hosts on a talk radio station in a small mountain town called King Falls. A big city DJ named Sammy comes to town to take over, I think, like the 2 a.m. slot. So it's the middle of the night. And crazy things happen in this town all the time. So a lot of supernatural, paranormal stuff goes on in this town. And there are things that people in this town just don't talk about. So his uh, producer, Benny, who he quickly turns into his co-host, has to try and lead him gently through all of these new revelations. And uh, it's just really, it's really fun. They talk about a, I guess we could call it a a knitting podcast. No, no. (laughs) There, there was a show on the station uh, that was Esther's Sewing Circle. I think they talk about this maybe in episode four or something. A uh, little old lady who had a sewing show on talk radio. <laughs> and so I'm like, oh, cool. Knitting podcast. Um, I'm not sure the guys that made this show really knew what sewing was because they were talking about yarn and crochet um, during this sewing show. But that's okay. <laughs> It's all crafts. <laughs> well, she was we, really old. Yeah, we know that uh, yarn-based crafting is a powerful podcast platform, I guess. Yes. So uh, they mention they mention her and Esther. Esther was really pretty cool. One of her mottos they talk about was, was "Bad times never last, but bad asses certainly do." Esther had a thing for death metal, just so you know. So. Crafty knitter yarn people are cool, even in King's Falls. So that's just one of the neat little characters that they introduced. The town is full of all the quirky people you would expect in a town. I know that we have talked briefly about Night Vale Radio on the show before. We've had some guests recommend it. Um, If you are a fan of Night Vale and you haven't listened to King Falls, you will enjoy King Falls. I don't find King Falls to be as um, kind of obscure as Night Vale is. I I like Night Vale, but I don't love Night Vale. I find King Falls AM to be much more approachable um, and able to jump in at any time. So like you would expect on any talk radio show, they have uh, weird quirky people in town call in and 
sometimes just to yell at them about stuff. Uh, there are some alien invasions that go on. There is a Palm Chi Palace on the outskirts of town. This is where a gentleman raises palm cheese. Okay. Um... Pomeranian Chihuahuas. Okay. Yes. And one may allegedly have been sexually assaulted by a werewolf. <laughs> um, so there's that. She ends up pregnant. We'll see what the what the puppies come out as. So uh, Palm Chi Wolf? <laughs> uh, you'll have to listen to find out uh, what happens. Where, where Palm Chi? Yes. So um, I'm just going to throw out a few a few interesting little phrases that crop up in the show that uh, just kind of cracked me up, I think would really maybe tell some people if you find these, these things interesting, I think you'll really like this show. There is a Jack in the box. Jesus. There's also a paper mache stripper pole. That seems unwise. <laughs> well, I think it's a regular stripper pole, but it gets paper mache, I guess to make it prettier. I don't know. Well, I would, well, I'm, you're not, I'm not actually going to slide around very well on the I paper would, mache. But. I, would, I would think that, yeah, I would, I would think you'd want a low coefficient of friction on a stripper pole. But. Yes, but there is a paper mache stripper pole that appears. Um, there, there is glorious sculpted facial hair mentioned several times. Truly glorious sculpted facial hair. And in episode 18... There is a really glorious country western song that you really need to listen to. <laughs> uh, there's also some colostomy bag blues. That's not the country and western song. <laughs> <laughs> I do believe it's it's mentioned. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, uh, and and in the later episodes they introduce a new character called Gwendolyn the racist witch, or she as she prefers. Gwendolyn the Hateful. So she's not. I expected her to be popping up with Gwendolyn the Good Witch, given the history of this town. But no, she is the racist witch. And she is. There's also been a couple of Trump references thrown in throughout the podcast. But this podcast started last year. Um, I believe, I could be wrong on the number. I believe it's like at episode 29 right now. So you've got a lot of, of um, catching up to do, but the good news is you can binge it really quickly. Every episode is around 15 minutes. Some of the newer ones go up to 25, but all of the all of last year's were all 15 minutes. So you can catch up pretty quickly, um, but it's just great fun. Benny <laughs> and Sammy, Ben and Sammy are just great. Um it's kind of, you know, it's it's kind of, I think, my my preferred podcast format for these kind of stories is there's just something so appealing about doing it as a radio station and the weirdness that happens. And that may be that may be kind of a generational thing. I'm not sure if the uh, uh, air quotes kids these days listen to the radio as much as um, my generation did, because we didn't have the internet, so the radio was really the only way we got to listen to anything. So that's curious. I don't know if the kids listen to stuff like that. Yeah, so and, much. I, and I never thought about it, but you know, we have those as reference points. So if you do a show that it's a radio show, you, you can get the pattern and kind of what they're going after. Mm -hmm. The other thing, it just with the whole world now being an on-demand world and streaming whenever you want, I just, I just wonder whether some of the constructs that totally resonate with you or I, in terms of what we're seeing through, make any sense at all to the young ones these days. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's interesting because, I mean, when I was a kid, WKRP was <laughs> big TV show. There you go. <laughs> no, it would, it would probably, I don't know if it would make it, if a similar show would make it on TV these days, but, um, and it's hard to even think now, but. That was a show my whole family watched together, and it really was not exactly child suitable. <laughs> but it was a long time ago. Yeah. So anyway, for those of you kids listening who don't know what WKRP is, it was a sitcom based in a radio station with some quirky DJ characters. That was um, it was very funny, but very 
out of touch with today's modern thinking, one should say. I would say that that's pretty accurate. Yes. And then, and who knows, you know, when you had an acting talent such as Gary Sandy, what, <laughs> whatever happened to Gary? I think, as far as I can recall, the only thing that I've ever seen him in was that show, and he was actually like my least favorite character on the show, and I guess in theory he was supposed to be the central one. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think he was everybody's least favorite. I don't. He wasn't our favorite. So it it was. I, we enjoyed it. Maybe it was because my whole family sat down to watch WKRP, and we didn't do very much together. <laughs> but I was very young. I didn't have any taste. But I remember I laughed, and there was a laugh track. You know, it was a long time ago, kids. Go look it up. I'm sure. I'm sure there's some YouTube of WKRP. But anyway, uh, King Falls AM. It is a great podcast. It is, it's funny. I was, I've been binge listening to a lot of it the last few days at work while I've been doing a lot of data input and everybody wants to know what I'm giggling at over there because it's just, it's just funny. Um, If you like (laughs) weird small town personalities with uh, some, some ghosts, there's, there's some ghost mafias in this town. Um, Abe Lincoln pulls out a ghost Gatling gun at one point and shoots up the library. Uh, there's a lot to love in this podcast. It's it's really fun. Some very entertaining stories. Some very unique characters. Um, and you really have got to check out Archie Simmons and, and his Pomchi Palace. Because it's good. <laughs> so King Falls AM. Um, KingFallsAM.com. They're also King Falls AM on Twitter. So And they're on Facebook. So. You can look them up anyway, but they're on every podcast uh, network out there. So just look them up. It's a lot of fun. And I, and I think we can give you partial credit for a social media recommendation for this week and just include Yay! the King's Fall ones. We'll put, that, we'll put that down in the social media recs as well. All righty. Well, I'll go ahead and add mine now. And Mel and I don't confer uh, before the show, so uh, you never know exactly what the combination will be. When I'm going to be recommending a podcast, too. So we'll do that, and it's always has a sinking feeling as you start to talk about it to go, I'm waiting for the show where you and I are coming to recommend the same thing. One of these days. And then it'll just be a super recommendation. Two thumbs up from Nurture and Support. Everybody craves a two thumbs up from Nurture and Support. There you go. Excellent. That's what we can do. So that won't happen this week because mine's different. It uh, Similarities is it runs about the same. It's about a 20-minute podcast. It's called Reply All. Uh, okay. It's from Gimlet Media. So Gimlet is a kind of a, a federator of high-quality narrative podcasts. And it features uh, PJ Voigt and Alex Goldman. It is a show about how the Internet shapes people and people shape the Internet. And it's, it's like crack cocaine <laughs> in terms of just such a huge variety of very kind of interesting things that, that they will go through. They will talk on, in some cases, just the two of them about a topic. Other times they'll pull in uh, a third party who, who goes out. They do their homework, depending on the topic. Uh, they'll, they'll go interview some of the people who are involved in a particular event. event. So like, and, they, and they go all the way back to the early days of the Internet. So there was something called Jenny Cam, which is a camera college student set up. They talked to Jenny and kind of kind of covered that whole story. And that, so there was a whole little, little segment on that. Uh, they have also another, uh, so it's a pop, it's, it's pop culture, all internet based, and I learn a lot of stuff on it. And it's just really just very entertaining. The, the hosts are, are knowledgeable and, and have a very good rapport, and they're fun to listen to. They have an interesting thing, and I've not looked up the ages uh, yet, but uh, PJ and Alex bring their boss in, uh, Alex Bloomberg, who's one of the folks that runs Gimlet, for an episode they call Two Yeses and a No. And basically, what will happen is they'll read a tweet or something like that, and PJ will go, do you know what that means, Alex? Yes. Do you know what that means, PJ? Yes. And then they go to their boss, who's older. And that's why I don't want to look up the ages, because I have a hunch <laughs> this older boss of theirs mm. is still a lot younger than I am. But he's, he's, uh, he's not as embedded in this environment as they are. And they'll say, do you know what it means, Alex? And he's like, no. So then they explain it to him. And at the end of it, they make him explain it back to them oh, God. <laughs> to see if he really understands it, uh, see if they can go to three yeses. 
and uh, he does a he does a really good job on it. And so it's a pretty fun segment. And so far, I'm early and kind of make, making my way through all of all of the ish, episodes. I've uh, I'm 0 for two on yes yes no's. I, I was thinking, oh, I'm gonna know these, but the first two they rolled out, I'm like, nope, I'm gonna learn a little bit here myself. So it's a it's a it's a good thing. And as I mentioned, fascinating, just some a wide variety of things. They talk about what was basically the French internet or the French internet to begin with, which was the French decided to replace their paper phone books with $200 computer devices in any anybody's home. Uh, where you could initially just look up the directory listings and get some other things, and then they started to add user-to-user -user communications. They kind of tell that that story from there. Um, they what I found just incredibly interesting is there's a a gentleman who uh, he's an editor for Wikipedia. He's a very focused editor for for Wikipedia. The only thing he works on is correcting the use of the word comprised. Oh. So if we were to say nurture and support is comprised of recommendations from Mel and Kelly. That's actually inaccurate because yeah. comprised means including. So we wouldn't say including of. So you shouldn't say comprised of, but we all do. It sounds right. Right. And, and it, it sounds like consists of or composed of, which are appropriate phrases. So it just makes sense to us. Sounds right. But it's not grammatically correct. Yes. And He's so, a grammar Nazi, in other words. Yeah, uh, and he he is, and it's it's very interesting. He is highly focused on this, and you know he's talking about well, how many instances would I find of this today? And he said you'd find none because I just looked at it this past Sunday. Blah blah blah. And he goes through and he kind of continually points out, yes, there are still occurrences of this in Wikipedia, but they're only in quotes, and I couldn't change the quotes, even though I wanted to change the quotes. So. Oh, I'm sure it eats him alive that he had to leave those there because somebody actually said it because it's actually used in regular language incorrectly all the time. And apparently he has he offers a 600, uh, no, excuse me, a 6,000 word essay on why you need to be just saying uh, comprise or consists of uh, instead. So and when he makes the edit, he includes that on the notes page, the link to the article. So that you and he gets in debates with some folks. So he was a, a very fascinating character. And then one other one that was pretty interesting was so when I say the name Mason Reese, does that ring a bell to you? How about I, Borgish Mord? Little Borgish? red haired kid? Little see yeah, see this is I'm finding out that you I think you gotta be pretty old to have Mason Reese knowledge. <laughs> no. Way way back in the day, before Where's the Beef, before all these other things, for Underwood uh, chicken, uh, the uh, kind of chicken salad kind of stuff. The the devil, the devil the, chicken. Yes, the devil chicken. The little chicken. cans. Yes. Yes. Okay. The devil chicken. There was a commercial, and the commercial featured this really round-faced little boy, kind of a very interesting vocal style, shock bright bright red hair, just the reddest red, Danny Partridge red <laughs> kind of hair, cut in a Prince Valiant cut. Okay. Uh, around his round little face, and yeah. and uh, he he did that commercial, and then one for Dunkin' Donuts and some other things there. And so he was making the rounds on the talk shows and all those types of things. And uh, the gentleman who brought this up was saying, one of his late night um, indulgences on on YouTube is to search for Mason Reese com commercials. <laughs> and all of a sudden, he came across this segment on the Mike Douglas show where Mason Reese broke down. Harry Chapin was on singing Cats in the Cradle. And during the introduction, he, he actually just had a complete meltdown. And so, like, why did that happen and all that? And he looked a little further, and he saw the person who posted it was a YouTube account named Mason Reese. Mm -hmm. And it was actually Mason Reese. And you get him in the second half of the of the show, they actually end up talking to him, who I don't think it's the best news of the world. <laughs> he, he hasn't changed a lot. He's just become... <laughs> An older version of of uh, a, a kind of a very unique look mm -hmm. uh, to to say, and so it was just just very interesting things, and to hear him kind of step through the, these different things is fun. So it's lots of cool little nooks and crannies of the internet. Um, I didn't know about weird Twitter, uh, and so I learned a little bit about that. So weird Twitter is you can't. It's kind of like Fight Club. The only you can't you can't talk about it. But it's the group of people that do kind of like really absurdist, clever things, uh, little short kind of tweets all the time. 
and uh, they're they're a thing. Weird weird internet or weird Twitter's a thing. So oh, I see. I, I'm I'm not cool, so I don't know that there are words for these things. So these that would be like accounts we all we all know. Yeah, I just we, didn't know they had a title. Yeah, yeah, we are likely following several people that would be characterized as weird Twitter. Uh, yeah. So it would be, it'd be interesting. But it's so it, it said you. I, I thought learned. I was weird. <laughs> yeah, I. <laughs> Twitter. I thought I was pretty weird. <laughs> yeah, well, but you're not the kind of weird the to make weird. it into weird Twitter, I guess. Yeah, but again, okay. I don't know. How. I guess that's a good thing. I don't know. But uh, it's super interesting stuff. Uh, they do their homework. Um, and then just fascinating stories. A guy had posted uh, uh, a personal ad, and then he kind of for fun threw in another one about, hey, uh, I'm, I've used my time machine once. It worked great. I'm looking to use it again. You need to bring your own weapons. Let me know if you're interested. And the level of responses and the stories of people coming to him are kind of, you get, you get these windows into people's lives, and you know some people are very serious. I want to go back to the day before my daughter had an accident yeah. or he said so it's it's a very very interesting thing so you're gonna it's, make me cry because that may that brings up Ludo's Broken Bride album that I recommended that was <laughs> what that was about that was what that album is about so it's, it's an opera it's a space it's a rock opera about a man who builds a time machine to go back to try to save his wife from dying in a car accident so anyway sorry yeah. had a flashback I was having a flash Having a blast, Dave. Excellent. Well, so uh, so two good podcasts here. Um, one probably quasi informational, and one sounds really really fun. Fun and quirky. Yeah. Quirky. I like quirky little towns. You know. So uh, th this one's not as countrified as <laughs> our last of my last episode's podcast, but this one's cool. And they post. I forgot to mention they post on the first and the fifteenth. So it's twice a month. Oh, cool. So. So, you know, make sure you're saving space on your podcast and make sure you get that nurture and support and squat cobbler downloaded first. Get through those who have on very unpredictable lengths. We'd like to tell you everyone runs 15 minutes or a half hour or whatever, but they got to do whatever they do. Yeah, but we've improved from the days when we were an hour long. That's true. That's, that's <laughs> we couldn't even stay interested that long, folks. Yeah, I was like, yeah, we gotta got to tighten this down. So we will continue to keep doing that and maybe get even more predictable one day, but. We'll stay close. Yeah. Uh, social media, you snuck one in already, I believe. Uh, uh, we can, we'll, we'll go add that one down there. I'm going to add uh, yet another Star Wars Twitter account to our long list of Star Wars Twitter accounts we've recommended. This one. So if I were to predict your fate, well, how do I want to do this here? Um, I'm, I'll give you this Twitter account, and I'm going to let you know my prediction is this is your favorite kind of droid in Star Wars, and you can tell me if I was right or not. Okay. So, so this Twitter account is Mouse Droid. And it's um, at Loft, L-O-F-T, Mouse Droid is the, the Twitter handle. And it's, you know, Star Wars memes, uh, clever little things. Sometimes they'll go back to history, uh, some of the history of Star Wars. But it's a Mouse Droid. And you can follow a Mouse Droid, and the Mouse Droid will follow you back. And it's a fun little account. Cool. So are the Mouse Droids the little, the little... <laughs> Cleaner ones that scurried around on the floor. <laughs> yep, the one that Chewbacca growled out and it yeah. took off. And that's, it ran away. Yep, that's yeah. the mouse droid. Totally cool. I like them. So, I like all the droids, actually. I could see you. And if you a, play, go ahead. I was gonna say I'd see you either as Team Mouse Droid or or Team uh, the the Gronk Droid, which is the the droid that's the box with the feet. <laughs> I <laughs> traumatize me. Just that that poor that poor thing when the Jawas were, you know. And Jabba was torturing that Torturing droid. that no. poor Gronk droid, no. yes. Totally unfair. Awful. Totally awful. But um, I, I have to say I'm a fan of the assassin droids. If you've played the games. <laughs> ah. <laughs> yeah. And if you haven't read the new Star Wars official canon books um, by Chuck Wendig, Aftermath has come out. Life Debt will be coming out soon. There is a droid in there that's uh, Mr. Bones. And I love him. He's awesome. Awesome. You can get a poster actually just released today, Cutting Edge News, y'all. If you buy the um, special edition of Aftermath Life Debt, which is the second book in the new Star Wars book series, at Barnes & Noble, there's a special Barnes & Noble edition. It has got two posters in there, one of the Millennium Falcon and one of Mr. Bones. So nice. check, 
check that out. You can pre-order it now. It comes out on the 12th. So there you go. <laughs> Excellent. Bonus recommendation. Yes. So I, uh, I think that's all we have. Yeah. We so uh, I see Matt uh, is crawling down from his paper mache stripper pole and will now walk over to the microphone <laughs> and give you all the information on how you can connect with us on uh, Nurture and Support on Twitter, on iTunes, Stitcher, etc. So uh, we'll turn it over to Matt, and thanks for listening, everybody. Sorry, Matt. You can contact us on our website, nurtureandsupport.net, or email us at nurtandsup at gmail.com. That's N-U-R-T-A-N-D-S-U-P-P at gmail.com. Or tweet us at nurtandsup on Twitter. Nurturing and supporting. Terminated.